And welcome to a very special open studio, a kind of bonus open studio. I started this painting on the Facebook live feed and we got about two hours in, realized it was going to take me, uh, well, I knew it was going to take me longer, but um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to show the rest of it. So what we decided to do on the feed last night is that I would work on this on my own and then finish it on the YouTube live feed. So that way you guys will see the painting from beginning to end and you can um, you can actually watch the first part of it on the Facebook Live. You can watch this open studio for part two, I guess, and then we'll finish it up on the YouTube Live. So it's in three different spots, but at least it's all up and running. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is where we left off. Actually, we have... This is going to be a little bit different than the open studio. Normally, you're, normally with the open studio, I have just one camera going uh, and we're kind of focused in on it. But I pretty much have the live stream set up right now. So um, so we'll be able to get different views. I'll be able to jump back to the overhead view so you get kind of a broad view of it. And then I have the close up and I also have the palette cam when we get rolling. So it'll be good. Try to, I'm going to try to keep my head out of the camera although it's going to happen because it happened last night too um all right so i'm just going to go for it and i'll talk about what i'm doing as i'm doing it just as if we were live i guess and yeah i think it's a good idea it's going to work all right let's see so i, I was finishing up at the tree last night and uh and in looking in that and seeing the contrast now with the tree i want to get i want to get this area lighter again if i jump back to this you can see the reference photo that i'm kind of working with now, this yellow here, is, by default, will get lighter when I bring in the rest of the orange. See how much darker this is than what I've got? Uh, so that will lighten up, but I still feel like it needs to be a little bit more bright. Um, so there are a couple of ways I could do that. I could do that with the airbrush. I'm just kind of looking at it right now. I did actually even lighten this up, too, yesterday when I was getting going. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten it up with the airbrush. Yeah, because I need to get the glow on this tree at some point anyway. So if I get a little bit of overspray on this, it's not going to matter. It's just something I'm going to end up putting on anyway. Now, because I mixed the yellow to do that yesterday, this light yellow, I'm just going to go for it with white. Because I'm going to eventually tint that anyway. And this way will develop all the brightness that I kind of need in here. So I want to get this in before I finish the, uh, the leaves all around it. And again, this is just straight white in, in the airbrush. I'm really concentrating on this area right here. So like I said, I'm not going to be hosing it down. So I'm not going to get too much paint over here. But if some gets over there, it's not going to be a problem. Woke up this morning and needed some... Some fluid, so I grabbed a Gatorade and I proceeded to inhale it into my lungs. So I've been uh, having fun with that all morning. <laughs> Random coughing fits, trying to get it out. So I'm going to take that same white, and in, in a few areas too, there's there's a little bit more. You can see a little bit more of the background that I lost. Again, this is great. I can switch back and forth. See, like up here. That's really bright. It's kind of showing through the trees. I like that. I don't have that here. Mine's kind of, you know, deep yellow. And I want to be able to show kind of the sky through the leaves. So I'm going to lighten that up too. There's a little bit of blue shift going on here because of the white on the warmer yellow. But white on yellow doesn't tend to blue shift like white on like a deeper warm like brown or um, flesh tone or something like that. So... There's, there is a little bit of blue shift going on with this, but uh, again, there's so much that's going to go on top of this that it doesn't matter. You can especially see it over here when it's more the white on the orange, then it blue shifts a little bit. But over here, it's less noticeable because it's more in the yellow. I think that's going to be good. A few more spots here and there just to, just to uh, give it a little bit of something. All right, that's good. Um, I don't think I'll be using the white for a bit, so I'm going to clean this out. Last night... All right, so it is Tuesday morning right now, and the live feed was Monday night, so I did a lot of painting. 
Um, actually, I didn't do any painting over the weekend. The last painting I did was on Friday, and I had left both... Turn that on now. I left both the, um, the palette, the wet palette open, and I left paint in this brush. And it was a fun surprise Monday night when I went and grabbed this brush, and there was still white paint, dried white paint in it. And uh, Monday morning when I came down to the studio, uh, the wet palette had just completely like dried up. I thought I thought I ruined the membrane underneath, but um, I didn't. It just uh, ran it underwater for a little while and it bounced right back, which is pretty amazing. All right, good. I'm happy with that. Um, again, seeing the contrast between the tree and, and the background now, uh, I, I was going to put the rest of the trees in, but I really kind of want to resolve this, this the tree area um, before I go and put all the trees in. It's just going to be easier because then I don't have to... I don't have to dance around the trees and try not to get paint on them. I can just kind of do this and then put the trees on top of it uh, again. So the reference photo that I'm using just as kind of a general rough thing. Uh, it's got a lot more orange in here and, and I want to make sure I get that. But already it's got that that glow, which which is what I'm looking for. All right. So let's get the, the leaves in. So that's going to be more of an orange color. I'm going to pick a kind of a smaller but still crappy brush. This is one of those just cheapo craft smart brushes. I bought these to um, clean out airbrushes. I talked about it last night. Um, they're super cheap. You can get them anywhere. You know, most times you can get them like a dollar store. They're cheap for a reason. The bristles all fall out and everything. And uh, I did have a Crayola brush, which was a pretty inexpensive brush, but it worked really well for cleaning airbrushes. It just didn't fall apart. These these brushes here. They, they fall apart right away. So, um, so I had a whole bunch of them because you get them like, you know, whatever it is. The pack is like 25 brushes for five bucks or something. So you get what you pay for. So these are the type of brushes you'd give to your kids or whatever and they'd, they'd have a field day. But they're good for this. They're good for, you know, smashing around and just kind of um, general painting. So I also did forgot, forgot to... Um, close up the wet palette last night too so it didn't completely dry out but all this paint is is more like tube paint now it's pretty solid which is nice and of course I did this last night too you guys can't see what I'm doing because I didn't turn the camera on all right so I'm mixing up kind of a golden yellow more on the orange side and this brush may not be what I want for this I don't think it is it's too wide okay so we'll switch up here I need something a little bit smaller but not micro small what do i got that's going to work i got this brush here which i used over the weekend to, or last week for the for the 543 tree so we'll try this yeah this is going to work this is a um more of a script brush like a um, pinstriper script brush is a low cornell but uh, again this brush has seen better days so this is going to work out perfect for this yeah that's nice so i need something that'll just put in real small leaves and I'm just going to darken this whole. It isn't across the board. It's just kind of in areas. And that's going to be nice. I don't have enough paint here to do what I need to do. But that's okay too. Now what's also nice is too. It's just again. It's, it's layers that add complexity to it. Which is nice. So I've got that original kind of. We, took, we were calling it circus peanut orange yesterday. And then I went over it with yellow and then a little bit darker orange. And this yellow here, this, this deeper yellow orange, is different than the other colors. So again, it just adds that complexity to it. And, uh, and it, it no longer, you know, looks like you just kind of squeezed it out of a tube, you know. Plus, you know, I'm using a different brush than what I used last night as well. So that just gives a different stipple feel, which is also good. So it's... The hallmark of good um, design, thanks to the teachings of my Uncle Mick, uh, say, you know, that, that good design is repetition with variation. So our, our brains love that. Okay, so I didn't mix enough paint of, at all. So I'm going to have to mix up some more paint. So I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab as much of this white as I can because this white has had it. This orange is still semi-okay. 
So the paint basically, um, as the wet palette was open all night, the membrane underneath was drying out and the paint was basically taking as much liquid from the membrane as it could before the membrane really couldn't supply any more liquid and then the paint started drying out and that's what happens so but again for brush work this is actually really nice this is working this is this orange here is now the consistency almost of tube paint it's not quite as thick as that but it's definitely thicker than airbrush paint we are full-on fall here so the studio also includes the uh, air conditioning and furnace for the house so sorry about the extra noise all right this color is not the same as what i just had it's more like that circus peanut color so i think i'm going to add a little bit more orange to it and a little bit more yellow there's a lot of white in this so that's fine so mixing on a wet palette um, you got to be kind of gentle with it because this parchment here will take a lot of abuse but if I start scrubbing this to mix it I'll rip the parchment I'll go right through it so you mix it almost like you're palleting uh, a striping brush so I'm mixing it by just picking it up and then just continuously painting it over and over again on the surface again this is a wet palette so it's pulling moisture up so even though I've spread it out it's not going to dry more yellow because I did add a lot of white to that that's getting there I think I'm gonna have to add a little bit more but I'll try it out you can see how flat this brush is this is originally how this brush was intended so this is a good lettering brush you know small letters things like that for sign painters I'm gonna have to reduce the amount of paint on here though there we go so I want it all kind of mashed up I know all the sign painters are like what are you doing but this brush uh, had reached the end of its uh, life before I started using it like this. And as any, as most people know, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not one to toss a brush because usually you can get some sort of use out of it. This is still very circus peanutty, but it's still darker, so I'm gonna kinda mess with it here. Yar, that's better. So part of the, uh, I talked about it actually today, on today's open, I'm uh, not open studio, on today's Tech Tuesday. Uh, one of the big things that's going on around here is I'm working on kind of redesigning the studio space. And since originally when I, when I set up the studio space, the live feeds were part of it but they were they weren't what they are now uh they were you know i, I was it was much lower tech i i kind of did my did my regular painting and my live feeds in the same place and use the same you know just single camera type of thing but over this year or the past year and a half i've gotten a lot m more equipment just for the live feed so live feed has its own its own separate section now in the studio and what i think i'm going to do because it was kind of put here out of necessity because i didn't have anywhere else to put it um, i wanted to kind of change things up and get um, a specific place just for the live feeds so basically the long story is that and the short story is i need to move it away from all the household large equipment like the furnace and air conditioner and all that so you guys get a better product but it involves putting up walls and stuff here so that has been something that's been kind of slowly developing as i come up with a plan for the space that we have here this is a great color this is perfect so i'm going to put this everywhere it needs to be so I'm kind of putting this in to get this darker orange feel and again that's kind of it's kind of what I'm going for in here and I'm just about there now it's probably I probably went a little bit too overboard but uh with this but I'll show you how I'll grab that back so there's a lot of yellow here now that I want to get in so let's get that 
going too. So the yellow is, to reintroduce the yellow is pretty easy because of the white. The white is opaque. So actually I'm going to use this little spot of white on the palette as my mixing place because I'm out of white there. So I'm just going to mix the yellow into the white and then put out more white after. Did I rip the... I had to make sure I didn't rip the parchment. I don't know if I have enough yellow here to pull this off. I'm going to have to put out more yellow. Let's see what we got. This is, this is super dry. So the yellow, I can just reintroduce that. So this painting is definitely going to have a different um, live feel than an air, just a strictly airbrush painting or mostly airbrush painting that I do. Uh, one of the kind of negative comments you get from people who, who really look at like just brush painting, um, as they look at airbrush art, their usual, the, the, the most common comment is that I can't see the brush strokes. I want to see the brush strokes in a painting. And, you know, everyone looks for something different in a painting. You know, some people really want to see the artist's hand and they want to understand that. The airbrush can blend things so flawlessly that that's a difficult thing to do. I, mean, I shouldn't say that. It's not difficult. I mean, there are certainly airbrush artists that have a very free type of way of doing things. But still, you, it lacks this, what I'm doing right now. This, if you hold this painting at an angle, you'll actually see the, the texture, the, the you know, the actual brush strokes. Some people really, really like that. They want to see that. And um, again, I chalk that up to, you know, everyone likes something a little different. So this painting here will be that more that, you know, it'll be more like someone will be able to understand it. There will be some elements, like when I get the, ultimately when I get the glow of the light coming through here, that's going to be done with the airbrush and that's a difficult thing. Or it takes longer to do with a traditional brush. So the airbrush makes that part of it super fast and really, really effective. All right, I'm much happier with that. So I just reintroduced some of the yellow. And again, what's nice is every time I add another layer to this, again, it adds to that complexity. It adds to that variation in these leaves. And it just really gives it um, a character. You know, it gives it a deep character instead of you know, a couple passes with, with the orange and yellow and then it's done, you can pick that up. You know, most people will be able to see that. Does it make it a bad painting? Absolutely not. But for me, it's, I want to get lost in it. You know, I don't want to be able to figure it out in five seconds. That is also, you know, an artist looking at a painting too. You know, it's like a mechanic looking at a car. If, if a non-mechanic looks at a car, they see a car very differently than a mechanic does, you know? So it's the same thing. You know, when an artist or when I look at a painting, I love to figure out how it was done. Not everyone does that, you know. So that, again, goes back to the whole thing that, you know, people look at art the way they look at art. And it's individual, really. All right. And this is also the hallmark of a good brush. <laughs> okay, so this brush has had it, right? Someone, I, I think I inherited this brush and, and it... It was stored like in a box or something like this. And the bristles just naturally want to bend like this because they were up against something for a while. Um, however, because this is a low Cornell, I can't even tell what kind of brush this is. 65C maybe? Even though this brush has taken a beating and it's totally abused, um, the, brush, the bristles will still come back to pretty close to, to usable. So even though this brush is not really... The same, it's definitely not the same as when it was new. This brush still has a lot of life in it, even though it's been beaten to crap. And again, that's that's what you get when you buy a good quality brush. You know, you you buy its longevity in addition to what it can do. So, here's your PSA on brushes. All right, I'm much happier with that now. Actually, I'm feeling actually not quite there yet. Almost there. I need some reducer. I try to stretch this paint out a little bit more I mean I'm gonna put more paint in it but it's it's right here and it's already out on the palette so try to get as much as I can out of it so around this opening I want I have kind of an orangey 
leaf in here, but I, I want more of this yellow. Again, details. It's, this is just kind of touching it in, adding those in in a few spots, not too much. If I hit the orange too much, like, like right there, there's too much of a blob there, so I can, I can kind of break that up with the yellow. That's better. That gives me a little bit more of that, those like really highly lit from behind leaves. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll put in the rest of the trees. And again, yesterday I'll show you how I did this. So I'm going to switch out to this camera because it's easier to see the whole thing. Now you can kind of get a feel for it. So I still got all these leaves, these orange leaves in the foreground that are kind of going to kind of drape over everything. And what's nice is we talked about depth yesterday, you know, try to introduce depth. And this is a very, I mean, if you just like squint your eyes, this is a very even type of pattern that goes across a lot of this. So in, in order to get depth in this painting, there are a couple ways to do it. And, and it's usually trying to include some sort of distance in it. So I've done that by including this, this kind of horizon line here with the trees kind of way in the background. And then the other thing is this kind of canopy feeling for the leaves. So I've got this, this background here, and then what's gonna be hanging over in front are all these orange leaves. And that's gonna give me like this tunnel that goes through these leaves. And that's gonna give the painting depth. All right. So, oh, right, that's what I was doing. So I'm just gonna sketch out a tree like I did yesterday. Um, I want, I kind of want these trees. I don't like all these, you know, kind of little trees bunched together here. So I'm gonna separate some of them. So I'm just gonna draw a, this other big tree, which I like. I do with my pencil, this works. So I have that one kind of, this one kind of heavy, not heavy, but thicker. So this one will be a little bit more in the background, so we'll have it more like this. And I do like the way it splits, so we'll uh, split that off too. And it's obviously longer than it needs to be, so what I'll do is I will figure out how really long this needs to be by putting this on the surface. So I want this probably just off that, so we'll go about and I want to see that, I want to see this notch in the tree. So, so we want this tree to be about here, like that. And then we'll run it off the top, make sure we get off the, the canvas. And that's going to do it. I'm going to cut out the trees individually. I'll, I'm going to put another one right next to this. Can I do those together? Yeah, why not? So I'm going to have another one coming off here a little bit. This one will be thinner. Yeah, uh, this one doesn't have to go as high, so I'm going to kind of have it like that. Okay. Yeah, actually a little bit higher, and then I'll airbrush that. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm right here. We'll do a third one here. I'm, I'm, into, I'm into the number three, so we'll do another one right here, kind of, kind of there. And then so I've got, I got four trees here, four main trees now. So I gotta make it an odd number just because. So I'll put another bigger tree here that will just kind of trail off. Notice I don't have any of the branches on here. I'm gonna add those after. I had the big branches on this one and I have the, the notch in this tree because it's a big branch, but all the little branches I'm gonna hand paint. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. So one thing I gotta make sure, pretty sure of, is that these are all on the same line. So when I go to line this up on the horizon, they're sitting on the ground and not floating around because that would be bad. All right, good. Let's cut these out real quick. That may be too broad. Well, we'll see. No, probably not. Yeah, I can live with that. Get rid of that. Do I need to get rid of this? I'm going to hold on to this, this little cutout, just in case. I need to do the background around it. Okay, this one here. 
This one kind of disappears into the leaves above. So I'm just going to kind of cut it at an angle and make sure that I don't, well, I mean, I can get, I can get close to that, but I just don't want a, a super hard edge at the very top of that because it's going to blend into the leaves up at the top here. So I'm going to kind of fade that as I get closer to the top. Okay, same thing with this one. This one, you're really only going to see the, uh, the trunk down at the bottom. And that's when you're going to see most of it, but it'll still fade at the top so that I can cover it with the, or the orange leaves that are coming. Uh, like that. Good. So they're in the right spot now for what I need to do. And again, um, yeah, it, it, you know, as far as the composition goes, there are going to be other little trees in here too. But for the main trees, and as I, you know, I try to do this across the board, um, I like odd numbers for things that are in the painting. Sorry about that massive zipper sound. I just undid my sweatshirt because the heat is rolling now down here. So, oh, look, I didn't even put those in the right spot. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. That's all right. All right, let me... um. Let me think about this guy over here before I go and put everything down. All right, so this needs to go on the horizon. And I want to get that, yeah, just, I want to get this just off. This tree needs to be just off the, um, the glow area. So that's where I want to do that. We'll put this magnet here. And I won't be able to use too many magnets in here because they're not going to want to stick through the ampersand board. I do have to come up with some sort of solution. Like get a really, really strong magnetic sheet maybe? I don't know. On the back of this that you know the regular magnets will be able to adhere to. But right now, the even the neodymium magnets, the big ones, have a difficult time kind of holding through the ampersand panel. Okay, let's take them one at a time, I think. I gotta mix up a orangey umber color. All right. I should have done all the trees at the same time yesterday, but we were pressed for time. So I did not. So I'll mix this up. So I get a little bit of red oxide here. That's the main color. And I'm going to add a little bit of reducer to this. And this is reducer with um, a little bit of uh, 40, 50 in it. There we go. So we'll start with this and then we'll kind of adjust it because I think that's what I did yesterday. Because I'm going for, a, I know I added some black to it. I can do this on this camera because you can't see what I'm doing. Actually, I you can't even see on this camera. All right. I will uh, try to describe what I'm doing. So that was a little bit of um, red oxide. And now I'm adding um, a little bit of black to it. I bet you anything. I had some, I did, uh, I don't know if I had some white in there. I don't know. Well, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to get this in. The good news is these trees are a little bit farther back than the one in front. So they can be a little bit different in color because of, you know, whatever atmospheric perspective is going on there. We'll see what we got. This is a very transparent color though. I had to have added white to that. Yeah, I had to. All right, let's do it. I'm going to add white. It's going to make this kind of... Actually, it's going to make this look like a flesh tone when I add the white to it. But um, it'll be good. I'll add a primer over this to kind of cover the areas that, you know, you, you, that I don't want seen. Yeah, this is almost like a dark, dark, dark skin tone. 
This isn't what I did yesterday, but um, that's okay. We'll figure it out. Do I need that? And now it's really warm down here. Take off my sweatshirt. Oy. Gotta do this one-handed. There we go. All right. not terribly worried about under spray which is the paint that's kind of getting underneath this template I want to make sure also that I am focused it should be because I didn't do anything different from last night there we go just to make sure we're good Okay. So back to the underspray. So the, these trees have a lot of leaves in front of them. So I'll be doing a lot of painting around them. So uh, again, I, you know, I don't want these to be like fuzzy or anything. So I'm kind of keeping my fingers on the, um, on the edges to kind of really do the best I can to keep it a reasonably straight edge. Uh, it was too much paint. It's all right. So mostly what I'm concerned with is kind of minimizing the background that you can see through this right now. Once I get that done, then I can switch to a more transparent color to get that, you know, that, that color there. I ran out of uh, paper on the on the last trip I made to Staples, and I accidentally bought. It was said it was heavy paper. Uh, however, it was only 20, 20 pound paper, which is still heavy. But the heaviest they sell is twenty eight pound. This is what this is, which I usually use. And uh, it was it was tough going through the twenty. I, I you said before it doesn't really matter, you know, the what paper I use. But I've gotten so used to this really heavy paper. When I switched to, you know, the even the 20 pound, it was like, my gosh, this stuff feels like tissue paper. And it really doesn't. It's really nice paper, especially for printing on. What I should have done is just bit the bullet and gone out and bought the 28 pound and just used the 20 pound for invoices or whatever. But um, but I didn't. I used it all up and... self-punishment for not reading the label, I guess. <laughs> Moving the palette with my elbow, sorry. There we go. All right, I think I'm just about there. This one over here just needs uh, a little bit of extra help because I hit it pretty hard with the uh, background color, but everything else looks good. All right, that's gonna give me enough to stand on. Oh, that last tree. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, and I just sprayed it all out. Oh, well. Okay. Well, we'll keep going. Let me pull this off for a second. I want to look at the composition to see where we're at. This last tree, I thought I cut it out too big anyway, so I may end up just hand painting it in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to hand paint this last tree and this, uh, the one that, the, the one that's going to be right here essentially underneath the palette. Well, I'll show you. And this one that goes right here, 
I'll just I'll just hand paint that in because that's about the size of a number one brush. Yeah, that's that's looking really good. Huh. Who would have thought? Yarp. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, should I darken that now? Yeah, I'm going to darken that now. <coughs> Excuse me, more Gatorade. <coughs> One second here. There we go. I turned off the mic while I hacked my lung out. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I want to I want to darken this a little bit, but I don't want to go crazy. This is this is perfect now at this point. So what I'm going to do is that original mix that I had, which is uh, well actually no, I'm going to take some. This time I'm going to take which you can't see. Here we go. I'm going to take some um, burnt umber. Actually, I'll take a bunch of this because I got to use it anyway. There, I didn't even clean out the brush, so the remnants of that last color are still in there. So I just took a bunch of burnt umber, dropped it in there. I'm going to put a little bit of black in this to get back that color that I had before I added the white. Like that. So it's just kind of a, a like a dark chocolate brown. Okay, lovely. So now I'm going to darken this, but I don't want to go crazy with this. So what I'll be doing is I'll be checking as I go. There's a mosquito in here. That's weird. Late in the season for him. Oops, I'm, I still have the other color in the nose of the brush. So I'm spraying this. I'm like, hey, nothing's happening. <laughs> Get rid of that. There we go. So what I'm going to do now, just really slowly, is to bring the value of this tree down a little bit. Uh, I don't want it as dark as this tree. I like it because it's, you know, about, I don't know, 40, 50 feet back. It's so all three of these trees. So I'm just going to kind of darken them up a little bit. And I'm going to keep checking them. As I go. Until I get it close to where I want. And I think that's pretty much close to where I want happy with that. I'm going to leave this color in the brush for a second because I'm going to introduce all those other trees. Plus, I'm also going to do, well, I'll do this now so you can see it. This area here is very textural and it doesn't need to be right now. Um, it needs to kind of blend in a little bit more. So I'm just going to take this color and kind of blend those paintbrush strokes together. You know, and in areas that I missed, like right here, just darken that up and add a little bit of interest to it. This um, orange band that I put in yesterday is kind of like what happens here is I want the leaves to look like they kind of it dips down a little bit and then it comes back up. So what you're seeing is all the leaves in the front here and then you're seeing a, a little extra bit of horizon back here. And again, all that just adds a feeling of depth to it that isn't necessarily overly apparent right off the bat, but you're, you know, the viewers, I mean, we've been outside enough, so people know inherently what they're looking at, just their eyes pick up all this detail and just kind of blend it all together and they say, oh, that's, those are, you know, trees outside or those trees over there are really far away. Our brain's good at doing that, uh, just kind of taking the, the, all the information and then putting it all together real quick. So by giving the, the viewer that information, even though it seems subtle, our brains are picking up on it. And that's what we're doing. And again, you know, a good airbrush is, is in the range of a paintbrush. So I can really get into this down here and, you know, almost mimic what the paintbrush was doing, but just slightly softer. And that blending is really what does a great job at a making it look like what it's supposed to look like, which is the goal for me. 
but it also again it's just one more different layer you know one more difference in the way that the paint is applied to the surface so now it's got even more i don't know it's got more character it's got more interest it's harder to tell how it was done burnt umber is such a good color so versatile i mean a burnt umber is the base for this most of the uh, caucasian skin tones that i do it's it's just i mean i use it all the time all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start kind of playing with this color a little bit because it is working so well what i'm going to do is uh, this area here or all the areas in the trees there are some that are a little bit darker than others it just kind of are you know kind of in shadow from the the leaves that are bunched together Again, so I could grab the paintbrush, mix up this color, and then just start dabbing it in in different places. But the airbrush is going to do that in a softer way. Plus, I mean, the Micron, I can get, you know, like a pinpoint if I want to, if I really want to get in close. Or I can step back a little bit and, you know, hit a bigger area softer. So it's just, I mean, I don't know what life as an artist looks like for me without this tool. And, you know, sooner or later, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll switch at some point. Maybe I'll get to the point where, you know, I just want to paint acrylics on canvas with brushes. I don't know. But for now, it's like I, I, I find the need for this tool. You know, it just, it, it fills so many little, you know, not little, it fills gaps in, in getting things done for me. So I can really kind of tuck in and get some of those darks starting now. And what's nice also too, again, it's the same thing because I'm kind of going over this area with the airbrush. It, it takes away some of that. Oh, that's done with a paintbrush type of feel. This area, I thought I was going to put in a tree here, which is why there's nothing really going on. So I'm going to use the airbrush again to blend in and correct the missing bits and pieces, so to speak. Again, there's a whole other orange layer that's going on, yellow and orange that's going on top of this, so. And then this green area up here, which is, actually you know, we'll turn off the palette cam for a second. This is like a, I did this with uh, moss green yesterday. And this is behind the orange leaves that are going to sit on top of it. But I don't think I have enough density here. When I go to put the orange on top, I think that a lot of this is going to get lost. So I can just kind of bump up its intensity with this uh, burnt umber color. And again, the airbrush puts it on. If you want to put it on real transparently, you can. it's really easy to do. So I won't overpower the green immediately. Where again, if I mix up a burnt umber in the brush, and just start dabbing it on there, I'm going to cover the green. And up here too, why not? Be some nice deep orange leaves up here to cover things, but I'm going to get this started beforehand, give this a, something to sit on. It's also, uh, there's a lot of brightness here that I want to pull back in that I, I don't have. It's it was part of this repair that I didn't do last night. And the repair was, uh, if, well, go back and watch the feed. <laughs> uh, but I'll give you the brief summary. What I did was when I put this tree in to get this dark, between these trees, I had a lot of over under spray. The, the airbrush kind of sprayed underneath the paper. And this gave it a real fuzziness up here. So I corrected all that with the paintbrush, but I didn't get bright enough. I want the l sun to be like kind of poking through right here on this side. That'll kind of, you see the light over here too. So by doing that, you have the main light here, and then I'll have little bits and pieces on each side. And what that'll do is that'll kind of cut the viewer's kind of attention right in right in this area it'll just keep them locked in so that's kind of what we're doing and again you know we now we now have three an odd number of light kind of poking through which again i'm all about not only odd numbers but i love the number three i don't know why 
I do know why. So that jumps back to, to my dad again, go figure. So my dad is the third son of the third son. No, wait. My dad's the third son. I'm the third son of the third son. So. Oh, I'll have to look about my grandfather. I don't know if my grandfather was also the third son. That would be, then it really would be cool. All right, so I just threw out a little bit more white. I actually put it in the yellow droplet, which wasn't really the best idea, but um, it's okay. I'm going to mix up a really light yellow. And this is, um, again, this is a artesian, Winsor Newton artesian brush. Again, this was a round brush at one time, number six, and it has just gotten the crap beat out of it. But these brushes here I mentioned last night, these are the brushes I used to clean out my airbrushes because, again, they're super high quality and they, um, I should have saved that tree for just this reason. Ooh, could I be that lucky? Did I just throw it away and it's sitting right here on the top? Of course not. <gasps> However, what the heck? I did save it. Nice. How convenient. So now I can just put this right here. Oh, I do, did lose this other branch, though. All right, that's fine. This is, still, this is still good. So I'll put this tree back on here as best I can. Grab a magnet carefully because I don't want to put a big scratch on the painting. Actually, I didn't even need to do it up there because I can't. I'm not airbrushing. I'm paintbrushing. I just need the magnet to hold it in place so I have an extra hand here. All right, so make sure this is really dry, and then I'm just going to kind of start adding that light back in. And this is the, how I did the repair yesterday. I just used a um, just a random piece of paper because I didn't realize I had saved this. It's going to be orange leaves kind of kind of all over the place here. So I don't have to worry too much about, you know, getting it on a, on the tree. I just don't want a ton of it on the tree. You know what I mean? So if some of it gets on the tree and makes that edge fuzzy, that's okay. But I want to kind of build this up enough. Uh, do I go on the side too? Just a little bit, not too much. I don't want really those, these two to connect. Again, this has to be done in layers. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll let, let that dry. If, if I don't let it dry, really, then as I add another layer on, it just smushes it around. So if I, if I let it dry, then the next layer will be more intense than the last layer. It just They'll just kind of build in, that so, in its opacity. Yars. This is much better. Lovely. And again, there's going to be orange leaves on top of this, so... It's going to seem kind of blobby when I pull this off, but um, you'll see. What, you'll see what happens. You'll see. Get this off without destroying everything. Ah, yes, perfect, 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 perfect. All right, good. All right, where are we at now? I got to get the rest of the trees in, the thinner trees and the branches. Should I do? I do like the little skinny one that kind of comes right up here. Huh. After all that. So, yeah, little ones. Um, go four in here now. I think I'll do one, one here. So I need a brush to do this. What am I going to use? I don't know if I can pull a long enough line with the number one. Yeah, I think I can get away with this one. Um, I'm going to slide this over a little bit so we get all the painting. I should have done that originally. Even just like I'll, so that's why I do this a lot. So you guys are pretty much right on this, like as I would be if I'm painting it. I'm about a foot, maybe 14 inches away. Uh, and you guys are about the same visually. Uh, but every once in a while, especially with a painting that's this, like, you know, there's this much texture going on. I always try to like lean back, you know, and look at it objectively just to make sure I'm on the right track. And um, when you do that, you get a whole different perspective on it. Things, those details, those mini details, all the brush strokes and everything, they kind of start to blend together. 
So it gives you a much better feel for what's going on. F immediately what I've, I've noticed is I love this color here for this tree. I went way too dark with this one. It's okay. I can, you know, the, the nice thing is, is the, the actual glow that's going to be put in is going to take a lot of that darkness out. However, if I'd started with this, I would have been almost done with it. But now I have to really work hard to get that glow to happen on this tree. Not a big deal. And it's that crap like that happens all the time. Uh, but I really do like, you can now really pick up on the, the three areas of the light here. And you can also see that, that pretty definitive um, horizon line down there, which, again, really adds to the, to the whole composition of it. All right, I'm happy. Uh, let's get this tree in. So I got to kind of mimic this color, which it was, I'll turn this back on, it is uh, burnt umber, white, and I had a little bit of, um, that's way too much white. Um, and I had some black in it too, which I don't have on the palette. There we go. Ooh, that went everywhere. That went everywhere. That's too bad. I don't care that the you know black got in got in the other colors. I was just concerned, not concerned, but I didn't. I don't want paint on the. You can't really see it because it's off the side there. But the uh, the membrane underneath here is exposed right over here, as I'm putting paint on it. <laughs> um, I don't want paint on that. Uh, well, I want to minimize the paint on that. Obviously, there's paint on it up here. All right, let's get some black in this. That's too much black. Steve, reset over here. A little bit of white. Now, the paintbrush is going to put this on different than the airbrush. Even if I got exactly the same color, uh, it's, just, it's just the nature of the beast. It's the way that the airbrush atomizes the paint where the paintbrush puts it on as a liquid so this color is going to have to be different than the other one by default so what i'm doing is i'm bumping up the orange in it by putting more or putting um red oxide in it because i know it's going to come out more flat when i do this the other thing that's really fun to do is let me find it yeah. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's right here. Yep. So the other thing you can do too, and I don't do this often, but this is a great, you know, it's nice that Createx, they don't even know it, but they have all the same mediums that, that you'd use for acrylic painting, like brush painting. So the UVLS gloss is designed as a clear coat, but it also acts as a great transparent medium. Which is, which is really, really fun. So I'm gonna put this on the palette. I'm not gonna put this in the little reservoirs below because when this stuff dries, I'll never get it out. In fact, I point this out a lot. See this middle reservoir here? I put uh, the opaque white in here and I can't get that drop of paint out. I've tried everything without damaging the, um, the reservoir. Um, I even tried a little bit of Restore, which was a mistake. The Air Createx Airbrush Restore melts paint, but it also melts soft plastic and started melting this. <laughs> so that drop of paint right there is permanent now. So the gloss has a similar adhesion quality of the opaque colors. So normally I would put the medium in this, in one of these wells, but unless I was conscious and cleaned it out um, and it dried in there, it'd be very difficult to get out. So I'm just gonna drop it on the palette. That way I, I I avoid the stupidity. <laughs> All right, gonna grab some of that. And this is really, you know, really, really on the thick side, which is nice. So it's gonna add a little bit of body to this too, but it's also gonna, you know, add to that transparency. All right, so we're gonna start with one of the small trees and see what this looks like. So if we have to bail out, if it needs to be something different, um, I didn't commit to, you know, some super dark color. Lean back and take a look at it, and it's on the light side, which um, which I'm 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 okay with. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all definitely okay with that. So I'm going to loosen it up a little bit with some reducer, because this is thick and it's not going to want to come out. It's not going to want to flow off the brush very easily, and because I'm looking to do these 
well, it came out too fat, but since I'm looking to do these thinner, thinner branches, I want this to want the paint to kind of flow off the um, off the brush. The problem is, is the more reducer you add, the more transparent it gets. So that's the rub. In here, though, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I should have done. Oh, I still have it on the brush. Lovely airbrush. I was going to say I should have darkened this up a little bit in here with the airbrush, but I still have it on the brush so I can still get away with that. So most of the branches are, you can see, are down or the, you know, the, I guess they're trunks because even on the small ones, you can see in here, in, you know, kind of mixed in this whole area, there are a few branches that are kind of up above, although they're they're pretty much on the top. All right, I'm going to turn this tree right here into my heavier tree since that's working out. So we're going to run this one right up here, and then it's just going to kind of disappear in the canopy above. Uh, so this is also me being lazy. If I went over to my brush caddy, which is over near my other bench, and I have a liner brush that would have been really nice for this. I could have loaded it all up and did these long tree trunks in one shot. Um, but I don't want to get up. You are seeing me in a very rare moment on a morning that I have not made coffee first thing. So I do not have my coffee yet, which is okay because I was breathing Gatorade earlier. So I'm trying to work that out of my system. These trees actually need to be a little bit darker down here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust this color to put these trees in. Yeah, but this color is gonna work great for one, for fixing, you know, if there was a little bit of weirdness, you know, the, the glowy part getting onto this tree, I could have, uh, fixed it with this but I did a good job on that so I didn't have too much going on there but I can put the other branches in on this this one now so I like that one that one's a good one so I've got a couple other thin ones that kind of come through here and there we go and a couple others that are coming coming down this way I want to kind of be careful in this corner. I don't want to go nuts here and put in too much. And this one definitely has some stuff going on like that. Okay. Yarp. This is, again, this is a bit too light, especially for this tree up front. It should be a lot darker, but uh, but I'm going to roll with it because these branches are a lot thinner, so I don't necessarily want them to be super dark. And again, I'm going to be putting that glow everywhere around here anyway. Uh, this one here is a few up in here. Again, this is a this is one of the Windsor and Newton watercolor brushes. This is a size one. I don't often get to use this a lot because of the paintings that I do are really small. This has a really nice small round pointed tip to it, but for the scale that I work on, um, I generally don't even get to use this that much. But it's fun when I do because it's a um, this whole series of brushes is just killer. Just I mean. I, I, again, I thank my uncle, the watercolorist, who introduced me to these way back when I was a kid. And I tell the story all the time. You know, he's showing me his brushes, and then um, to show me the point on one, which I still do to people. When you show someone the point, or when you want to point a brush, you, you, you put it in your mouth, right? You just, you know, kind of wet it with your, with your mouth. Um, and watching him do that, I was horrified because I'm like, oh my gosh. And he said to me, Steve, if your brushes aren't clean enough to put in your mouth, they're not clean enough. <laughs> and ever since then, I'd be like, oh, all right. 
and I am I am beyond fortunate to have a few of his actual brushes. When he when he passed, uh, my cousin Jim had a couple of his brushes and uh, sent them my way. So I don't use them; they're they're put away. But uh, but it's it means a lot to me. Good. I don't want to go too crazy with this. Again, you can go nuts, and that's not what I want. All right, these trees down here. These trees down here need to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to... I like this color. I'm going to save it because it worked out really well. And, of course, I just added way too much black. Okay. So we're going to hit the reset button again. We're going to put some of this color over here. Grab some of the clean color. And we should be in good shape now. So you can just, beyond this little orange line here, the orange horizon, you can see the trunks of trees underneath here. Kind of mixed in. Actually, it needs to be a little bit darker. Lovely. So I'm going to throw those those in. This this whole you know painting trunks thing. This can go sideways like just about anything. You know you have fun with it. It's like hey, I'm putting in trunks. Woo -hoo! And then all of a sudden you realize you you know they are everywhere <laughs> and there's way too many of them. <laughs> so that whole thing, branches and trunks and all that. Yeah, you got to be careful with that too. But I'm I'm happy with that. Again, you're looking at all these without the next layer of um, leaves on top. So they just kind of randomly stop. And that's not going to look like that when we're done. All right. There you go. So uh, this brush is old, too, uh, for me. Um, I've used this brush a lot. In fact, this is the brush where um, the ferrule popped off the handle. And it was just, I don't know, it was a weird thing. I don't know why it just it wasn't crimped down or whatever and you never get these brushes with quality problems this was just a, a freak so i put a piece of tape on it and then jammed the ferrule back down and been using it ever since so so this is how old this brush is this is um from the art experience in massachusetts this is the art store that i worked at as a kid um i was what my son and daughter were born but my youngest son had was not born yet so it had to have been like early 90s that I was working there. And this brush is still, still holding up. All right. I like that. And again, I still have that brown in here, which is fantastic. This was, again, this area I had envisioned having a bunch of trees, but it didn't really pan out in the composition. So, so I'm going to fill it in with, um, with sh shrubberies. Let's get that working. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of paintbrush in here because again, I don't want just one tool. So if I put in this kind of shrubbery with the, I know all I can hear is Monty Python stop. Um, if I do all this with just the airbrush, you, it's gonna look like some weird brown fog is going on in the background and I don't, that's not what I want. That's gonna be the new, uh, one of the new swag shirts around here. It's, that's not what I want. <laughs> between what could go wrong and that's not what I want. And I have to say it, uh, when you watch this video, uh, if it, when you watch it first when it comes out, if you're watching it much later, thank you so much for jumping in and catching up and, and watching all this. So at this moment, I just started uh, YouTube memberships and uh and you guys have been great so um so thank you so much i'm again it's a new thing for me so uh, i'm gonna have uh new icons to celebrate the length of your membership uh, i get new emojis as uh, the membership builds that's a uh a bonus that they give they, they, they give me as the, the memberships build. They allow me to uh, introduce new emojis that you can use in chat. Uh, it's So all that's coming. And I, for those who have signed on in the charter era, I am I'm just just overjoyed. I'm, I'm, I'm deeply grateful. It'll be a lot of fun. So the reason why I thought of it is because it, it's it, the name of the group is what could go wrong. All right, I'm leaving this color in here. I really like it. So I just got to, I don't know if I do need to do anything in there. Yeah, I kind of do. It just kind of sticks out.
I still have the moss green up here. It's actually, that's probably viable. Well, sort of, kind of. Not enough for what I needed to do. Uh, again, that little bit of um, moss green from yesterday kind of dried out when the when I left the palette open. But um, I'll be able to get enough of it to kind of get some of the green in here. Add some random uprights here. Just kind of break it up a little bit. Yeah. And a, a quick note for, for anyone who's watching it when this video first comes out. Uh, this painting, I'm going to put it on the, I've already got it on the site, so I usually do that with demo paintings from the live feeds. And uh, so it, it, it is available at the time of filming. Um, however, if you go check it later uh, and it's not there, I, I apologize. It has been collected. But as of right now, I mean, it's only been eight hours, so... But it is still out there. All right. I am happy. Again, we'll lean you back. See the whole thing, how it's coming, but it's working. Nice. Oh, I didn't even know I had that. So that what I just grabbed, this is a brand new number one. Not brand new, but this is a much newer number one. Didn't even realize I had that. Guess I do. All right. Yeah, I like it. All right, where are we at? All right. Uh, I oh shoot, <laughs> I'm burning through this thing, and I got to make sure I leave enough for for Thursday. Yeah, if I don't, yeah, if I get too far on this, we won't have anything to paint on Thursday. That's not going to be good. So let's um, go try to plan this so so what we have to do up here left is um, the the mid orange which will set up all this the canopy all these leaves right here and then there'll be a darker orange and a little bit of you know red reddish to kind of build in the details of these closer leaves because you can make out more on the closer leaves where these back leaves are just kind of a pattern and then I have to do the whole <coughs> excuse me the whole ground all the leaves on the ground. So let's um, let's set up for that, and then then I will end this video, and you guys can jump over to if you're watching in real time. You will have to wait till Thursday for the live feed, so that I can finish it there. And if you're watching it after the fact, you can just switch to the live stream playlist and look for this video. Not this video, but the other video. All right, so I'm going to take that crappy craft brush that I had before. And what is in this? Is it green? No, it's black. Oh, there was a spot of black in that. So I have to mix a clean one up. Grab some white and a little bit of Hansa yellow. One drop should do it. This is opaque. I, I'm really trying to use the opaque paints as my kind of foundation palette, as, as the main colors of my palette. Uh, the, the adhesion on this stuff is amazing. It uh, sprays really nicely. The colors are very pure. So this is, you know, Hansa yellow, uh, which makes it really nice and predictable. So, so this is becoming, you know, the colors that are in the opaque line are becoming my, basically my palette. All right, we'll see how yellow this is. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it. Again, the same thing with the orange. The orange is uh, pyrrole orange. Look at pyrrole orange. And then the king of all colors, I love this stuff. I can't believe how much I use. This is pyrrole red. I love, love, love this color. It's uh, it's fantastic. And then for uh, I wish, I wish I could tell you which blue I like best. Um, they have a couple of them, and uh, and I like them for different reasons. So the let me grab it here. So the Wicked Thalo blue has kind of a green cast to it when you airbrush it. It looks really blue there on that little smudge, but um. 
when you airbrush it or mix it with white, for instance, you, you, it has a really, it's, I mean, it's subtle, but it's, it, it feels like it's shifted over to the green side. So, um, that I, you know, for skies, I tend to, um, mix that or use a little bit of blue violet. That's, that's a, a popular blue for me. So I like the blue violet a lot. And then, believe it or not, I never, I didn't think I'd use this at all, but I use this a ton, especially for sky colors. So the Wicked Daylight Blue is already, you know, kind of a, not a pastel blue. It's much more brilliant than that. But, um, but it's a great base for a sky color. You add a bunch of white to it, and it stays really cool, like high atmosphere color. Uh, it's just, it's a nice color. So I've been using that too. And again, those pastel -y colors, I, I immediately say, yeah, you know, it's great. I'll never use it. But that one I really did. I added too much orange to this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I wanted really kind of a brighter. Get that out of here cuz I need to I need that to dry so I can paint over it. The area just beyond the leaves in the foreground, I want that kind of bright. Yeah. So that's just prep work for the uh, leaves that are going to go in front. I want to get that done first for Thursday so that when I go to put the leaves on, you know, it, I'm working from the background to the foreground. Anything that needs to be done in the background, I want to get done so that I can just kind of concentrate on the foreground. I think I'm going to reintroduce that over here too so that it gives your eye something, something to do in the middle on the ground. Here we go. And it's subtle, but it'll that'll pop out more when I get the darker orange leaves down below. Okay, that's good. What else do I got to do before Thursday? Anything? Because I think we're almost at the point where we start working on the canopy in the front and then the glow. And Yeah, I'm going to do the leaves on the ground on Thursday on the other live feed. On... It's going to be part three. I'll start calling it part three. Um... Yeah, the glow here, I'm going to add some yellow to that. That's going to be all glow stuff. That's dark enough in there. That's dark enough in there. I don't know that I super like... Let's get a dry brush in here. I kind of want to break this up a little bit. This kind of goes across a little bit too, like, evenly. So we'll pick up some... This is dry... Just kind of push this this dark area up a little bit in a few spots. I'll break that up. That way it's not so like straight across. Yeah, that's better. Scale's important here too. So the leaves obviously they they're in perspective too, even though you can't make them out. But in a way, you can. So the leaves that are going to be in the front here, the, the canopy leaves, those orange leaves, it's a different brush stroke than what I'm doing down here. The, this area down here, I'm just barely touching the panel. So it puts these really tiny little stipples down. If I, if I do that same thing up here, it makes everything feel really flat. So the, the, uh, on part three, when I do the, the orange canopy, those are going to be with a bigger brush and they're going to be real chunky. Same thing with the leaves that have fallen on the, on the ground. They're going to be bigger. The brush strokes are going to be more, you know, noticeable. But down in here, it's just really, really like just touching it. And it's amazing what that scale, again, it's, your brain picks that up. It's like, oh, that stuff there is smaller than this stuff here. So that must be farther away. So your brain's going to do all that when you look at it. And that is the fun part about this whole thing. You know, this is just liquid color on a flat surface, but we're trying to make the brain feel like they're looking through a window. That's, that's the fun part. That's the illusion of it. Some darks in here just for fun. Again, I could just burn through this and finish it, but I want to have part three be on, on the uh, live feed on Thursday. Again, this dark color is fantastic. I'm having trouble stopping. 
I, I need you guys here for live so you can tell me to stop. <coughs> All right. I am really happy. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a good spot for Thursday. I, I know I can spend about two hours on Thursday and finish this up now. All right. So let me jump you back a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to move the reference so you get more of a feel for the painting. I'm going to tilt it more towards you guys so you can see it. But that is how that's coming out. So again, when you lean back, you see things that, you know, that that will help the painting along. So right now, if you if you kind of look at it from far back, it's still got this kind of um, took off the dirty globe. Uh, it's still got the uh, this kind of overall yellowy orange color, even though there's a lot going on there when you get close. It's still got this really like kind of um, mono, almost monochromatic golden yellow color. So now I know when I when I do the leaves in front and when I do that canopy of orange here, I really want to push that orange and that will give that'll that'll just kind of it'll kind of frame the whole thing in. It'll also introduce a much brighter color in this too, a different color than that golden yellow, especially in here. This will be great because you'll see all these little bits and pieces of light coming through those deeper orange leaves uh, and the same thing over here, too. And then the final thing we'll do Thursday, the way it'll kind of end is I'll really lightly go over this glowing area with the airbrush and like a, a like a golden yellow. And it'll add this like glow to it, which will uh, really kind of finish off the piece. So there you go. All right. So thank you for joining me on part two of this bonus open studio. It was a quick one, only three episodes, but um, I appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you for hitting that like and subscribe and doing all the YouTube things. I really appreciate it. And uh, to the new members, thank you so much. It means, like I said, it means the world to me. It keeps everything going. All right, so for Steve Leahy and Open Studio, I will catch you guys all on the next one.